What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got Jeremy Stevens on the move, Jake Paul talking about Dana White again, Cody Garbrandt talk, and much more. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to see more videos just like this. Now let's get into it. Israel Adesanya vs Kamaru Usman is a fight that manager Ali Abdelaziz wants to see. Welterweight champion Kamaru Usman and middleweight champion Israel Adesanya have looked incredible in their respective title defenses. The two champs form two corners of the African triumvirate of champions which also includes UFC heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou. It's been pretty well known that they are all friends, and any talk of them challenging one another has been squashed in the past, mainly due to the fact that all of them, especially Kamaru, wants to see more African champions in the UFC. But Kamaru's manager, Ali Abdelaziz, is openly saying that he'd love to see his client move up in weight to challenge Izzy for the middleweight belt. Case in point, this is what Ali had to say in the recent interview with TMZ. Bro, listen to me. At the end of the day, these guys, I don't think these guys, they cool, but I don't think they're like best friends. Right. Listen, if they enough money for both of them to fight, they will fight in the parking I know how people work. This have nothing to do with loyalty. This have nothing to do with... Because these guys not like the training partners, the yeah. brothers. You know what I'm saying? They're African brothers. And yeah. it's a whole lot of battle. Ali goes on to say that even though they're close, if the UFC did back up the money truck in front of their houses, they would take the fight in a heartbeat, and that selfishly, he wants to see Usman become a champ champ, hinting that he believes Usman could beat Adesanya. He also says that Dana White wants this fight, and if he wants it bad enough, he can make it happen. Although Usman and Adesanya do have to take care of business in their respective divisions, Adesanya is less than two weeks away from defending his middleweight title against Robert Whittaker in a rematch of their previous encounter, in which Adesanya took the belt by a second round TKO. The rematch for the title will headline the UFC 271 event on February 12th. Meanwhile, Usman is still nursing a broken hand that he sustained in his last bout, but he's tapped to defend his title against Leon Edwards sometime this year. What do you make of Ali's comments here? Do you agree that if each man is offered more money and all things lined up, they would accept? And who do you think would win a fight between Adesanya and Usman at middleweight? Is Saeed Nurmagomedov using schoolyard tactics and calling out Sean O'Malley? Chael Sonnen thinks so. When Saeed Nurmagomedov destroyed Cody Stamen in under a minute via guillotine at UFC 270 in January, his star rose quite a bit. But did it rise enough for him to fight Sugar Sean O'Malley? He thinks so, as he's been calling out O'Malley ever since then, and took to Twitter in his first few tweets ever to do just that. Hey Sugar Sean, UFC offer you to me two times. Your chick never responded. Run. What we're gonna do now? I wanna kill your hype. Hey guys, I wanna send the fans and the MMA media proof. I was sent a bout against Sugar Sean of MMA on December 11th, and they couldn't get a hold of him. He was at the beauty salon getting his hair done pink. This coward. The Russian is doing his best to call out someone who is not only ahead of him in the bantamweight division, as O'Malley is ranked number 12, but someone who is also a media darling and a fan favorite. Sugar is doing well for himself, stacking up a lot of wins in the UFC, doing so many times by TKO or knockout finishes. And while some may say it was against lesser talent, he's still a big, big draw. And now former fighter Chael Sonnen is weighing in on the matter, saying that O'Malley is not responding simply because Saeed isn't big enough. But he also said this about the way Saeed is going about trying to get the sugar fight. I don't challenge that fact. I didn't call Sean and ask him, hey, we offer this guy. I'm not, I'm not adding credibility to this or stating for you guys that this is the way that happened, but this is what was said. And if I read it, it might have. Now that doesn't sound like Sean O'Malley would turn down a fight and this is what it was designed to do was try to embarrass Sean, which is a real schoolyard tactic. What are your thoughts about Sonnen's comments here? Jake Paul believes Dana White will not respond to the diss track. The Dana White diss track was dropped just a few days ago and has already hit 2.3 million views since it was released over the weekend. While the YouTuber turned boxer has been talking about his next potential event and what the future could hold, he was asked whether he expected Dana White to respond to the diss track while on the MMA hour this week. And this is what Jake Paul had to say. Not at all. I think he learned his lesson when he, you know, responded, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago while I was on vacation. He, he responded with his like little selfie video where he was red as a crab and clearly pissed off. 
and it just made himself it first of all brought more attention to everything and then he made himself look really stupid and in the music video, Jake Paul goes after Dana White and the UFC, claiming that they severely underpay their fighters, don't provide adequate health care, and much more. While he also called out fighters like Jorge Masvidal for not making a lot of money. Still, what do you think about the music video? And do you agree with Jake Paul that White won't respond? Don't forget to take a second to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all the latest fight news. Cody Garbrandt's coach admits that one more KO loss could spell the end for the former champion. Cody Garbrandt has lost five of his last six fights. All of them, except one, was a knockout or TKO loss inside of two rounds. Now, the former bantamweight champion's longtime boxing coach and uncle, Robert Meese, says that one more knockout could mean that he should hang up his gloves for good. Garbrandt's last fight was in December at UFC 269, a TKO loss at the hands of Kai Carr France in his debut in the flyweight division. Weeks after that fight, in a recent interview, this is what Meese said. If Cody gets knocked out again, I'm pretty sure his career is over, but Cody can come back. George Foreman hit a bump in his career and came back, and he had more fun and made more money and won the heavyweight title. Mies goes on to talk about how other fighters had career slumps and were able to come back to become champion, saying that this could happen for Cody as well. But he questioned how much he's been affected by the weight cuts he's had to do over the course of his career, offering his own experiences when he used to fight. The loss to Kai Kara France was a big setback for Cody's career, and while it's uncertain who his next opponent would be, and also in what weight division and when he'll fight again, there's also been some talk about him possibly, potentially, maybe meeting Sean O'Malley next, given their beef. Still, do you agree with Robert Meese that Cody is just a knockout away from ending his career? And do you believe that Cody could bounce back from his bad streak? Professional Fighters League signs UFC veteran Jeremy Stevens. Jeremy Stevens is a well-known longtime UFC veteran of 34 UFC fights. He signed with the promotion all the way back in 2007 and has fought some of the best fighters in the world. But after losing to Mateos Gamrod last July in the first round by a submission, his third straight loss, the UFC decided to let his contract expire, with Stevens electing not to re-sign with the promotion. And just like that, a 15-year working relationship between the two sides ended. Stevens says he really wanted more opportunities and better pay, and since he's really only averaged about a fight, maybe two per year over the last half decade, it allowed him to reconsider his standing with the promotion. This week, he's announced that he signed with the PFL, the hosts of the Million Dollar Tournaments, in a recent interview on the MMA Hour, this is what Stevens had to say: "They're gonna, they're gonna pay me a little bit more than than what UFC, and then I got a chance at a million dollars, which is doable, which I, I really love. Um, maybe go in there, win that million dollars, and you know, I like the fact that they fight back to back, like month after month. Like I, I'm not getting any younger. You guys know I loved to constantly be be fighting. I don't like sitting and waiting for opponents six months down the road." Jeremy Stevens has fought the likes of Rafael Dos Anjos, Jose Aldo, Gilbert Melendez, Hanan Barral, Yair Rodriguez, Zabit Magomed Sheripov, and others. But what do you think about his move to the PFL? Are you excited for this? Thanks so much for joining us today and catching up on all things MMA. What do you make of what's going on in the fight world? Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all the latest fight news. 